Good morning, it's David Schlotthauer with a tropical update on Tropical Depression 3 for Monday afternoon, June the 19th. As always, my thoughts in this video are mine alone and making decisions regarding TD3. Consult the National Hurricane Center and your local officials for the best information for where you are. Now, if you like these detailed tropical updates, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and leave a comment so you can get all my updates. So here's a look at the Atlantic wide satellite imagery view on the entire Atlantic. And again, we're gonna be focusing here on tropical depression three for the entire video, since this is now a pretty big threat to the islands here of the greater and lesser Antilles, including for Puerto Rico. And yeah, we're starting to get possibly uh, portions there of the Dominican Republic in play as well on Tropical Depression 3 as this remains a threat. The close-in zoomed-in view satellite imagery here clearly shows you there's uh, a lot going on here. Uh, you know, the system has evolved pretty well over the last 24 hours. We have a better defined circulation. We can see clouds coming in out of the southwesterly direction here. I'm again looking at the low level clouds and then the flow kind of turns right here in the mid levels and at the surface and then the winds kind of back all the way around here where we do have a closed circulation and we can even see based on the convecting banding, we have some deeper thunder activity going on closer to the center which means that the system is pretty well defined this morning and it is expected to become better organized further for this to possibly become a tropical storm as early as tonight or if not early tomorrow morning in Atlantic Eastern Standard Time. Here's a, a zoomed out view of the system overall and we can see the broader picture. There's a system right there, Tropical Depression 3. And what you might notice here is there's a lot of dry air off towards the west and also to the northwest of the system. Well, how can we tell? We can't see dry air unless we actually look at a water vapor imagery. But when we look at a RGB satellite imagery like this, we're looking for thunderstorms out ahead of this. Are they collapsing? Are they remaining well intact? In this case, they are collapsing and we even have semblance of outflow boundaries associated with this, which means there is dry air lurking out ahead of Tropical Depression 3 and this will soon become a problem for how strong this might end up getting once it gets very close to the Greater Antilles and also the Lesser Antilles within the next three days. Here's a look at the water vapor imagery and we can see the drier air that we were talking about here in darker shades of gray. Now it may not seem like there's a lot of dry air immediately close to this system, but if we look very closely, there's outflow cirrus, which of course is going to make the relative humidity higher. But if we look underneath here, we do have some drier air that is slowly getting pulled closer into the system. And we might already start to see some of that already impacting the system by looking at some burstiness to the inner core structure. So it's going to be interesting to see how this all evolves. Does this drier air, more of it get in or get ingested into the inflow, the southern side of the system, or will this be able to remain in a fairly moist pocket? Because shear is really light otherwise right now, less than about 10 knots for the time being. This look at the latest tropical discussion from the National Hurricane Center. I'm going to read just a couple of paragraphs for you all because this is quite important. This entire discussion here will be in the description below the video. So satellite images indicate that the tropical wave over the central Atlantic has become better organized this morning. GOES 16 one minute visible satellite imagery shows that the center has become well defined near a developing central dense overcast with a prominent convective banding in the northern semicircle. So again, it's what we were talking about here, that banding future that they're seeing. The initial motion, oh wait, let's see here. The initial intensity is set to 30 knots based on the Dovrik estimates from the Tefab and recent satellite trends indicate that the system is close to tropical storm status, which means probably in the next advisory, this, will, this could or will be tropical storm Brett. The initial motion estimate is about 275, 18 knots. So this is moving pretty good, actually. A bit uncertain because the center has recently become trackable. 
a large ridge to the north of uh, or, or basically in the central Atlantic basin is forecast to cause a depression or storm at this point to move generally westward over the next several days. As the system nears the Lesser Antilles late this week, the ridge should weaken, uh, and I'll show you that on the models, and we talked about how a ridge would likely weaken once it approaches the Lesser Antilles, causing the system to move more toward the west-northwest. However, there is considerable uncertainty on how much of a right turn could occur because it is somewhat tied to the intensity of the cyclone. A stronger system will tend to move more towards the right due to the upper level flow. And then we mentioned that in yesterday's video, while a weaker system will likely move more westward under the influence of a more low level ridge in the atmosphere. For now, this forecast lies near the model consensus and adjustments are likely in the future advisories. This should be considered a low confidence track forecast since this type of forecast situation can result in large, huge errors. So again, just because you guys are under this cone of uncertainty, again, it is all about that intensity. Intensity here is everything with the system. If the system is able to intensify much faster, the system might just do this and head north. I'll show you one of those scenarios on the models. While some other models indicate that the system may not intensify as quickly and it might do something more like this. Or in the weakest scenario, like with what the Euro has it, it might just go like this. So there's a lot of track errors here, folks, because again, it is largely due to the fact that if the system t intensifies faster than what is expected, it just may gain latitude faster. That's why there's a huge cone of uncertainty here, stretching all the way from near the Barbados, or roughly where Barbados is, all the way up to the north here, in the U.S. British Virgin Islands, into Puerto Rico. So just keep that in mind. And right now, winds are at 35 miles an hour, and it is moving pretty quickly right now at 21 miles an hour. And also, a little bit of a tip about this system. It is also inducing its own wind shear right now because it's moving pretty fast, okay? So we'll see if that little shear or the track or fast movement of the system can prevent really fast intensification. The depression is forecast to strengthen and move across the Lesser Antilles as a hurricane on Thursday and Friday, bringing a risk of flooding and heavy rainfall. Hurricane force winds and dangerous storm surge and waves are also anticipated. Given the larger than unusual or usual uncertainty in the track forecast, it is too early to specify location and magnitude of where these hazards could occur. However, everyone in the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands should definitely be aware, closely monitor the updates to the forecast for this system, and have their hurricane plan in place. Okay, more information can be found at um, hurricanes.gov. Okay. So here's a look at the most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds with its probabilistic forecast. We're thinking about 8 p.m. on Thursday. Now again, there's a huge difference with this forecast. If this thing goes to the north, then the earliest tropical storm force winds would be maybe about 8 or say 8 in the morning on Friday. Okay, versus that the system is going to go further south, it might be 8 p.m. on Thursday across the greater Antilles. So just be aware of that, okay? Uh, there's a huge model spread here on exactly where the system is going to be moving to and what are the chances. But for right now, it's a 30 to 40% chance of seeing this system impacting your area as tro a tropical storm. But the chances do go up once the system gets stronger. So here's a look at the latest European model. Um, this is the Zero Z run, and we're gonna show you a couple of model scenarios. Our hurricane models are currently not rendered at this time, so hopefully those will be released in my next video this afternoon and evening when I have an evening update on the system. So the look at the European model here, this is a look at the geopotential height, these height contours, the wind at 200 millibars, and the color coat, which indicates how much vorticity, how much spin is in the atmosphere. So when we go forward here in time, you'll see that the Euro uh, does gain latitude with this system just a little bit, but it is furthest south still with most of the model guidance, as you can see here. 
there's the the tropical storm at this point or tropical depression and the system is going to be steered uh also by this 850 millibar ridge that is to the north uh and when we take a look at that steering flow in just a second you'll see that then this approaches maybe by thursday night onto some of the greater and lesser antilles here uh, as it again gets steered by this low level ridge to the north again intensity matters a lot here folks this is um, feeling most likely the lower steering flow pattern because it's a weaker vortex it's shallower it's not very deep and strong so it's going to follow the more a uh, flow out of the easterly direction which is helping to steer the system generally well westward here uh, on this model and this is day five all right, let's take a look at the um, GFS really quickly, and we'll look at the moisture plot here in just a second. So looking at that model, we can see that the GFS does show a stronger system. Well, much stronger, uh, that is, and that's why it gains latitude a little more quicker. But also has been kind of leaning towards the euro a little bit more. Has been kind of trending further south here on the model runs versus previous model runs if we go back and look at that we can see uh, how the trend today has been further to the southwest versus prior model runs had it all the way over here because the gfs thought that maybe it's going to intensify much quicker while it stays away from uh, these islands more efficiently versus now we have seen a huge correction uh towards the southwest because now the gfs sees that the system is not as strong as what it was what it thought it might have been two days ago so we have seen this trend further southwest and i'm thinking right now we're going to start seeing more corrections with the euro model incoming uh, model runs today i believe so when we take a look now at the uh, the 700 to 300 uh, millibar um moisture plot here uh, the green colors here illustrate lots of moisture simply while the browner colors here indicate lesser moisture or lesser relative humidities now that dark patch of air that i've showed you guys on the water vapor it's right here it's being well modeled today on the euro model it's doing a pretty good job at handling this situation pretty stinking well so going forward here we can see how um right now at the moment the shear is light but once we get past, say, two and a half to three days, the shear is probably going to pick up. And we can see evidence of that. We can see if we take a closer zoomed in view here on our tropical tidbit site. Actually, we can't take a closer zoomed in view. I wish we can. Um, but you can see that there is shear here. Mid-level vortex is off center from the surface vortex that we can see. So these are not well aligned. They're not stacked very well. And this is, can be very tricky because if the system is able to be stronger than what the Euro thinks, it's more stacked. Uh, it might be able to thrive a little bit better within this sheared environment since shear is going to be generally out of the southwest and west-southwest at roughly 20 to 30 knots, which is strong enough to tear apart a cyclone in its formative stage. Uh, going forward here, we can see how the system really struggled here out to 90 hours out this is the 06z run by the way the uh almost decoupling here and that's again due to the shear a lot of dry air that is going to be ingesting into the system now how is this system going to be steered by well if we look at the european model we have a couple of plots the vorticity the 500 millibar chart and the upper level 200 millibar flow chart and we can uh, go forward here and we can see how this is all going to be um how this is going to be steered by right so uh self-explanatory here we have a deep layer ridge here positioned to the north helping to steer the system generally westward here again a vortex deep uh, depthness again how deep the vortex is and how strong it is will matter a whole lot here because a deeper vortex will feel more of a steering flow influence more out of the southeasterly direction at say 300 millibars 200 millibars versus a shallower vortex likely be steered by the low level flow from the trade winds generally blowing out of the easterly direction the ending result here is that the Euro um, has a stronger ridge to the north because this trough is sampled a little bit further north. 
then see what the GFS is going to show with what I'm about to show you here. And the Vortex also is weaker, so it's not going to feel that big 500 millibar ridge as much as with a stronger, deeper cyclone would feel. If we take a look at our GFS plot here, uh, again, a couple of scenarios here. If we go forward here, um, we can see that this trough now uh, right in here is actually much further south. You can see the edge of this trough right down here to the south. A nice good isotropic trough trying to develop here. The ridge is back in here at the 500 millibars. So this is going to actually help to develop what is what we call a tut uh, or a, a tropical upper level tropospheric trough. We've got a little bit of a pinch here with the flow, a little bit of kink, I should say at about 200 millibars and it's a deep trough too extending down to the 500 millibar level so then we get our steering flow that is something like this uh in, in the upper levels of the atmosphere while our mid-level flow again is like this so this is actually going to impart more of a southerly shear on the system probably about 20 to 30 knots and so the end of the forecast here we can see how we do have that shear that is going to be quite strong, uh, helping to inject some of the drier air and uh, moisture. Now, the GFS does not have much of a implication to this forecast because if it turns uh, to the north sooner rather than later and it avoids maybe this portion of the Caribbean, it's probably going to be well aligned with the shear vector that is from the south and the overall deep layer steering flow because we got this ridge that is going to be developing and therefore might be able to intensify a little more efficiently. And this becomes our player two, uh, Invest 93L, that um, might also have implications to the forecast later on. So really quickly, I wanted to show you 92L, uh, the intensity forecast here, really quickly. Again, there has been a trend down today. Remember, we were thinking maybe a Cat 2 to Cat 3 yesterday. Well, my forecast was initially looking maybe at a Cat 1 with 74 mile an hour winds. My intensity forecast is still unchanged from the last one, and I am not going high yet. I'm going to keep this at 74 or so, maybe 80-ish miles an hour. Um, for many reasons and if we go back and actually look at the NHC forecast they have 80 miles an hour so my intensity forecast is fairly consistent here and I am not really comfortable going higher some youtubers are probably going to be like oh we're gonna uh, this is going to be a cat 3 or a cat 4 still I would really disagree with their forecast at the moment because again they're probably looking off of one specific model run data and they're not looking at the overall ensembles. So right now, I am going to hold this at 75 miles an hour for my intensity forecast of this video. My track forecast is very uncertain at this time, along with the hurricane models. We can still see wild outcomes here. Stronger system going to be um, gaining latitude um, within the next three to four days versus a shallower vortex is going to likely barrel straight in. We're probably going to be favoring a weaker system here and so therefore areas on the greater antilles here lesser antilles definitely need to be staying tuned for um, my updates here i'm going to have two updates a day on this as this remains a pretty serious threat we could be talking about a hurricane here in the next four to five days 74 mile an hour winds or greater and storm surge flooding heavy rainfall flooding could really be a problem here so please take this seriously folks um, as you, what you would always do. I know some of you are notorious of getting systems like this usually, but again, every system can be different and please treat these as if it is a different system because every system is clearly different. Now, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on disturbance number two, but this is dubbed now Invest 93L out there now roughly about, about say, 25 or 30 degrees west longitude. This has a 40% chance of tropical development in the next seven or so days. As always, again, um, because we are looking at our first disturbance, uh, depression number three, we're not going to spend hardly any time. Pretty busy Atlantic right now, and that's probably going to continue for the next several days as the MJO is fairly favorable. So that is going to do with this update on Tropical Depression 3. As always, 
any uh, all my thoughts in this video are mine alone and please consult the national hurricane center for the best latest information for where you are at please be safe folks and i will have another update on tropical depression 3 this afternoon should be released right around 5 or 6 p.m pacific daylight time so make sure you all make sure you all subscribe share and like and enable all notifications for the youtube channel that's going to do it thanks for watching